No good deed goes unpunished. But lying for the establishment is a path to success, to promotion and wealth. Repeating the establishment's lies, cheerleading for them, pushing and supporting whatever lies the establishment tells carries no damaging consequences for the liars. Even when the lies are exposed, and lies are always exposed in the end, the liars shrug and move on to telling more lies. Telling the truth, however, in this upside-down world will never be forgiven. Still out there in perdition, exiled never to return to their old lives, to the restoration of the reputations they had before, are those who told the truth. Exile for defying the establishment is a life sentence. But while lying carries no consequences for the liars, there are consequences, all sorts, that the liars never see coming. Just as a for instance, the number of American parents deciding not to submit their children to the state-recommended jabs is at an all-time high. Never has such a large proportion, as much as 5% in some states, opted to keep their child away from the needle. Who could blame them? I'm not aware of a similar report here in the UK, but it's reasonable to imagine a parallel trend, hesitancy born of suspicion that those in charge of the medical world, those making the decisions, are not to be trusted. And once trust goes, it never comes back. The world of medicine has made itself untrustworthy. The lying is everywhere. Now more and more people see the lies coming at them from all over. Every day the lying about the pandemic, the use of dishonest propaganda, the deceit and obfuscation, the nudging and psyops, the threats and bullying, the censorship and silencing of dissenting voices are more blatantly exposed. Also exposed is the truth of what some voices warned early in the debacle about the economic suicide of lockdown, about lockdown's inevitable harms to health, physical and mental, about unforgivable harms to children. Every day the lie about safe and effective, the 100% safety and efficacy we were told to trust in relation to those medical products promoted as vaccines is more obvious. And yet last week in Brazil the population was told that if they don't get their children jabbed with those products they'll be denied state welfare. Big Pharma was not even asked to test whether its products would prevent transmission of disease. The claim that was the entire foundation and justification for pushing those products, mandating them for health workers on pain of losing their jobs, pushing them on children, for whom the risk from COVID was so low, it emerged at one point that 4 million doses would have to be given to 2 million children to stop a single admission to intensive care. That the products would not stop transmission, that the benefits of wholesale jabbing of children were vanishingly small, if not non-existence, that the JCVI, the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, had discussed and acknowledged that the risk from the injectables of myocarditis and pericarditis, especially in young males, was real and serious, was, we know now, information available to those dictating policy from before the beginning. And yet still the people of this country and the wider world were bombarded round the clock with propaganda that those products were safe and effective. Indeed, that to refuse them was tantamount to deliberately killing granny. Lies. I say all of this makes what happened, what was knowingly inflicted on the people of this country from youngest to oldest, unforgivable. When I was a child, fairy stories started with once upon a time. Now they begin according to experts. I hold my hand up and say I was, in the beginning, as gulled as the next dupe. But in spite of that, for those first weeks, it never occurred to me that the government and others in authority would knowingly unleash harm on us. And yet it becomes unavoidably clear that they did. That's precisely what they did. There's now no denying the truth that they were informed of the harms that would be done, but that they went ahead anyway. Right there is the reason why there have been and will be COVID inquiry or no COVID inquiry, no meaningful consequences for those responsible. Because the appropriate consequences would surely see the highest in the land behind bars for years, if not for the rest of their lives. And let's face it, that ain't ever going to happen. In this upside down world, you and I might face jail time for lighting a wood burning stove in winter or saying a man can only be a man and a woman can only be a woman. But for setting in train events that killed, permanently injured or otherwise destroyed, never to be known numbers of people, all that lies ahead are honours, bigger jobs and bigger bonuses. No meaningful consequences for the liars then. And the same voices that lied about all of it have gone on to lie, I say, about one thing after another. About the human impact on climate, about the building of a digital prison with digital IDs, social credit scores and central bank digital currencies, about the war in Ukraine and most recently about the blood-drenched hellscape of Gaza. 
The peoples of the world are set at each other's throats, and as abuse is howled between entrenched groups and sides, all manner of world-changing mischief is plotted and acted upon by the usual suspects that never face the consequences of their actions. While the fires burn and the blood flows, Bill Gates' World Health Organisation moves to centralise power over 193 member states, including the UK. The same liars are lying about that, of course, saying the amendments to the international health recommendations are nothing at all to fear, that no threat at all is posed to national sovereignty. But liars lie, that's what they do. I say now, though, the liars are playing with fire. They lied about the war in Ukraine, and now half a million Ukrainians are dead, alongside tens of thousands of Russians. In April 2022, former UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson scuppered any hopes of early peace. The big lie about the West's involvement in Ukraine was that it was about saving democracy there. But since that lofty claim was made, President Zelensky has banned opposition, taken control of the media, stopped elections and most recently banned the thousand-year-old Ukrainian Orthodox Church. From the very beginning, there were voices asking questions about that place and that war, about the involvement of the Biden family with business deals there about the way the United States pushed a coup d'etat in Ukraine in 2014 to get rid of a pro-Russian president and replace him with one well disposed to Washington, about Nazis in the ranks of Ukraine's fighting forces. Any and all questions about those matters and more besides were loudly shouted down as some sort of treason. There's no doubting the truth now, though. It turns out there was no democracy to save in Ukraine, just lucrative business concerns. At the time of his death in 1940, Major General Smedley Butler was the most decorated Marine in US history. In 1935, he wrote a book called War is a Racket, in which he declared, War is a racket, it always has been, it's possibly the oldest, easily the most profitable, surely the most vicious. It's the only one in which the profits are reckoned in dollars and the losses in lives. Weapons sent to Ukraine by the West mostly out-of-date store-cupboard weapons, but good enough for a veritable smorgasbord of death, have since turned up many thousands of miles away, sold on the black market. What was always going to happen is surely happening. Russia will take the Russian part of Ukraine, being the Donbass, seat of the civil war that raged from 2014 onwards, and it will retain Crimea and its access to the sea. That's what was always going to happen. And while without the West's contribution to the suffering, it might have happened 600 days and half a million deaths ago, finally everyone is accepting that bloody inevitability. The warmongers and carpetbaggers enriched by events in Ukraine operated in the near certainty that pain caused there would not be felt in their own backyards. Now they're playing with matches in the Holy Land, which is a horse of a different colour. Ancient trouble there, made of decades of wickedness, is being stoked. Cry havoc, bellow the worst of them, and let slip the dogs of war. But fires that catch there will inevitably spread, perhaps out of control. Sage commentators warn that the resultant conflagration may consume in its entirety the state of Israel. In any event, tens of thousands of Palestinians are being annihilated. Any voice even suggesting a ceasefire is to be silenced. But we here in the West are hardly beyond the reach of likely flames. After decades of people in power cynically and deliberately making trouble for communities across Europe and here at home in the UK, decades of meddling, of turning blind eyes to simmering hatreds and abuse, the populations of Europe and also the UK are up to our ankles in petrol. The liars and their troublemaking servants are playing with matches again, and the possible, perhaps inevitable consequences are plain to see. Are we to be herded into civil war, holy war, world war? As always, ask qui bono, who benefits? When all that US weaponry, billions of dollars worth, was casually left behind in Afghanistan, it created a massive lucrative opportunity for the military-industrial complex to replace it all for hundreds of billions more dollars. Ukraine was another sump soaking up more ordnance that had to be replaced. On and on and on, a multi-billion dollar merry-go-round of death that never stops spinning. Ask yourself what happens next. There are rumours of a draft in the United States. Will American sons and daughters be sent to die in the Middle East? Will yours? Will mine? And for what? Here's the thing. If the liars don't want you to ask questions, it's because they're scared you might learn the truth. And the truth is that it's lies all the way down.